The idea was looking at all the facets of a, of a community, of a city, of a population, and optimizing the environment so people unconsciously move more, mm -hmm. socialize more, know and live their purpose more, and eat more plant-based and less fewer calories altogether. Those are the four pillars. Sounds like you've been doing a lot of this work with the Blue Zones project, and I would love to hear more about that because I, I, um, it is wonderful that somebody can take charge of their own health, right? It's wonderful to measure where you are, see where you are, want to improve, take steps to improve, but um, it's maybe bigger than the individual. So what have you been doing with the Blue Zones project as it relates to policy and creating that environment where people are exercising without exercising? <laughs> yes, so the key insight to Blue Zones is no matter where you go in the world and you see people living a long time, they don't try. They do not pursue health in the way we pursue health. We're good. Yep. Get on that diet, yep. you know, start exercising and those supplements, yep, I'm gonna get them and I'm gonna take them every day. And the longevity hack, I'm gonna try that. They don't do any of that. They just live their lives. And longevity ensues. Mm -hmm. Longevity is a product of the right environment. So based on that insight, it's now been 14 years since I organized the very first Blue Zone project in a place called Elbert Lee, Minnesota. The idea was looking at all the facets of a, of a community, of a city, of a population, and optimizing the environment so people unconsciously move more, mm -hmm. socialize more, know and live their purpose more, and eat more plant-based and less fewer calories altogether. Those are the four pillars. And if you put your, your Blue Zones goggles on and you look at every facet of the city you're not looking for a silver bullet, you're looking for silver buckshot. You're looking for 80 to 100 evidence-based nudges or defaults that you can deploy at the population level. What does that mean? In each of our Blue Zone cities, we have three squads. The first squad is a policy squad. And they work with city council to go through and find consensus on policies that favor the pedestrian, the bicyclist over the motorist, that favor uh, healthy food over junk food and junk food advertising, and to favor the non-smoker over the smoker. And in each of those categories, there's about 30 evidence-based policies, and we work with city council and make them go through every one for effectiveness in that city mm -hmm. and feasibility in that city. So it doesn't matter if it works in New York City. Is it gonna work in small yeah. town America? And in my, and you know what? Every time, Renee, when we um, take them through this process, we identify six to 10 policies in each of those categories where everybody looks and says, we could do that. And, uh, and then we, somebody on our team makes sure that those policies, the timeline is managed mm -hmm. to, to, it gets passed, gets implemented, and in many cases it needs to be enforced. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have a second squad that administers a Blue Zone certification program for restaurants, grocery stores, workplaces, schools, and um, churches. And in each of those places, once again, we're trying to get them to change their policies and change their designs so people mindlessly are moving more and eating better and socializing more. And we make sure people, you know, I bring up this purpose idea quite often, but it's very clear that people have a sense of purpose are living somewhere between seven and eight years longer than people who are rudderless in life. And most Americans uh, don't find purpose at work. Uh, only about 30% of Americans find purpose at work. So we like to help people identify what you know, they're good at, what, the, what their passion is, what, what they like to do, and then find a non-work outlet for it through mm -hmm. volunteering or the community. And then a, a third, squad works with about 10 or 15 percent of the adult population to become blue zones ambassadors and they come into their homes and kitchens and optimize it so they mindlessly eat less and mindlessly move more so like actually people's homes like yeah, constituents like, homes um you'll notice on my counter i don't have a bag of chips uh with a clip on it i don't have a toaster 
on my counter because I know if you have, we're, most of us are what I call a seafood diet. We eat the food we see. Mm -hmm. So if I walk through the kitchen, I see a bag of delicious chips and I'm hungry. You know, I'm a pretty disciplined guy, but if I'm hungry, I'm gonna grab the damn chips. Mm -hmm. Same with a toaster, by the way. Yeah, Cornell, tell me about the toaster. <laughs> well, well this, is, this is a study done by Cornell Food Lab and it showed you take a control group and a study group. And in the, control, the study group, you take the toaster off of their, off of their um, counter. And after two years, the study group, the non-toaster people, weigh about five pounds less than the control group. Interesting. And the theory is that when you walk through your kitchen and you see a toaster, that's a quick way to make something warm and delicious. And there's very little that comes out of a toaster that's healthy. You know, it's pop tarts or bagel or you know, piece of toast on which we slather butter and jelly. Um, it's much better to have a fruit bowl, you know, which is I keep this out. So yep. what I see is this, and um, not that I don't like eating junk food, I do, uh, but um, I just try not to bring it into my house. And if yeah. I bring it into my house, I keep it out of sight. And th those are very blue zones. Um, um, uh, consistent strategies. I wrote that book there called Blue Zone Challenge. It takes people through all the evidence-based things they can do to their home, their work life, their social life, their uh, commute life, so that they, their unconscious decisions mm -hmm. are engineered to be slightly healthier. Okay, that's great. And actually, I should say that the the title of this book is The Blue Zone's Kitchen, 100 Recipes to Live to 100. And that's The Blue Zone's Challenge. I also want to admit I ate Pop-Tarts for dinner one night last week. They were delicious, but I do try not to make that a habit. It's a, it's a good square meal. I mean, it, literally. <laughs> this is more rectangular. but <laughs> Pretty funny. I like it. Um, but uh, it, that's a great point about the toaster. I did not know that. I try to put whole grain toast in the toaster, but I do love some whole grain toast as well.